Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, this is HD StarCraft, and I'm here for the final game of the set, here in the Zotac Cup between CM Storm Pult, and of course Liquid Snoot, Terran vs Zerg action, and it's time for the final game, so the Terran player is of course going to be pulled in the top left hand corner as the red, and in the blue is going to be Liquid Snoot as the in the bottom right hand corner, and this is now tied up at 2-2, winner takes all here in the final match, here on the final map, Belshir Vestige. And um, so far, Snoot actually winning the last two games with just really uh, quick cheese and uh, very aggressive. But, um, you know, I think I, I, I really do personally believe that Snoot has the skill, the talent to be able to play Pult uh, at a high level as well. And uh, when I say high level, obviously, I mean late game high level. I don't think, you know, as evidenced by game one, I think Snoot played a really good game there. But uh, after losing that game, his confidence, confidence might have been shattered a little bit because I think I think game two, he, he, he messed up in a few spots. And games three and four, he just said, forget it. I'm just going to try to kill Pult right here, right now, as quick as I can. Now, having said that, he's basically cheesed Pult two times in a row. Uh, is it going to work again? Probably not. Uh, I, I want to say that Pult now is definitely going to be leery about any possible uh, early aggression. And he is probably going to be a Johnny on the spot with the scouting, comms adding, Reaper, bunkers, walls, everything he can to make sure that he does not fall prey to some type of early shenanigans. Now, you know, if I were Snoot, and I'm not obviously, but if I were Snoot and I had his talent and skill in StarCraft, I would try to use this to my advantage and macro. I would play a sick macro game here in the in the final matchup because this is this is a decent map to play macro on. I mean, it's not I don't think as good as like Akalon Waste, but it's still a pretty sizable map. The only thing though is on this map, Zerg has a little bit harder of a time uh, playing late game because the the map doesn't really have that much of an open field to work with. Um, a lot of the a lot of the areas are choked off. There's some ridges. There's a lot of ramps. So you do have to play this carefully here, but uh, I definitely think if I were Snoot, I would try to capitalize on Pult's caution here and, you know, um, take it to the next level, try to macro and win the game. Having said that, though, he might just, you know, he might just do something uh, crazy, uh, some type of crazy cheese again. You never really know. This is the final game. Uh, and here comes the first unit from the Terran side. It is going to be a Reaper on the way out here. You guys will note the new upgrades, jetpack, and of course, combat drugs. Um, all of this allowing the Terrans to just be a complete beasts uh, with their Reapers. And uh, here comes the Reaper now making its way down to the bottom right hand corner of the map. As you guys recall, the initial Reaper doesn't really do all that much damage, but it is good for scouting. And typically, a Zerg can't do too much about this until the Queen comes out. Um, two Zerglings now coming out here. Suit immediately pulling the weakened Zergling to the back, pulling the other weakened Zergling to the back. Very nice micro. And uh, always fun to watch the Zergs kind of trying to micro to save their early game units here. And Suit is doing a pretty good job so far. He's just buying time for the Queen to come out. And now that the Queen is, um, he can actually just pull all the Zerglings away and let the Queen take care of the rest. Um, and he might even be able to kill off this Reaper. Oh, he's gonna get the kill! And that is a great start for Snoot because uh, you, you guys already know that Pult is so worried about possible cheese here. N losing that Reaper basically means that he's not going to be able to get a cheap scout in unless he makes another Reaper. Uh, he will be forced to use a commsat or find a way to make it so that Hellions can get into the natural and main. And we've already seen how careful Snoot is with blocking off the ramp uh, and blocking off the front door. The only thing here is on this map might be a little bit harder for him to make a full wall uh, with his buildings, although I'm sure he will try. Um, so I think for now Pult is definitely in the dark and it's not a good start for him. Uh, we'll see what happens here as Snoot is preparing to bring his Zerglings in. He is going to be able to find an SCV here that he can probably pick off. One bunker being built inside the nook and cranny. Uh, but it looks like he probably won't get any damage done here as there are already four marines out. And uh, now that their home is complete, they'll be able to hop inside and play it safe in there. And I, like I said before, a lot of Terrans love to build the bunker here. And they'll make another like building here as well just to make sure it's completely sealed off. And it's just a great spot for Terran coverage. Meanwhile, an Overlord trying to float, here, float in for Snoot. Uh, you know, the, the honest truth is Pult hasn't really done anything different the entire series. But this time, he produces a Siege Tank first. And uh, that is certainly a little different. Now, I don't think that Overlord saw the Siege Tank and might have just glanced by it. But uh, as, as far as it goes right now, Snoot actually doesn't... 
uh, you know, he doesn't really know that uh, Pult did open up. I don't think he knows that Pult opened up with the Siege Tank first. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that, oh my god, Pult is going to play a di totally different play style. I think it just means Pult wanted a Siege Tank first because uh, he was leery about possible all-ins. And, you know, one of the best defensive units in the game is a Siege Tank. So, I, I think that's probably why Pult went for the, the tank first. And the other thing that's interesting here is we saw the barracks leave the uh, tech lab and I, uh, uh, Snoot saw that with this Overlord. Usually when you see something like that, you kind of deduce, oh, the Terran is going to build a starport there and I'm going to be dealing with Banshees pretty soon. Uh, but the fact of the matter is Pult actually didn't build a, build a starport. He actually just uh, put the factory uh, back onto the tech lab and uh, now he's going to build another barracks. So kind of interesting because we aren't seeing a quick starport this game, which is definitely a different take uh, to uh, to uh, Pult's game. Every single game that he's played so far, he's built an early starport. So we're not going to be seeing early drops. Uh, as far as Snoot knows, he probably thinks there's a starport coming, but there isn't. And there's actually a Widow Mine here that is going to burrow down behind the uh, mineral line here, and it's going to get one shot off on the Queen. Now, um, I like what Snoot did. He brought the Queen forward, let her absorb the damage so that none of the drones would die. Uh, and he'll have to quickly make an Overseer, and in fact, there is one now coming out. So, in fact, there's one coming over from the left-hand side. And so that Widow Mine is certainly going to die, despite Pult's efforts to uh, try to save it. It was like, get out of there! But uh, unfortunately, it did go down. So Snoot, um, killing off the mine. So far, a pretty passive start to this game, 10 minutes in, and uh, definitely not seeing an all-in here from Snoot. Uh, quite obviously, you know, he's got the third down, he's on layer tech, adding in bailing and infestation pit, and he's adding on a fourth hatchery, so, um, if you, there was any wonder, is Snoot doing something crazy this game? No, he's not. He is gonna play, uh, a straight-up game here with Pult, and, um, you know, that's the way StarCraft is meant to be. So, it, it's gonna take all of his skill and all of his talent here, and, uh, you know, likewise for Pult, too, because I, I still feel like Snoot is a very capable player. Armory is coming right now, uh, which is going to enable, of course, the next round of upgrades for the infantry. Um, we haven't actually seen Pult play around with Hellbats too much, um, but uh, I guess there isn't really a need for it when his mines are just so effective against the Zerglings. Uh, but of course, Hellbats are another way to deal with the, with, the, with the Zerglings as well. But regardless, so far, uh, uh, Pult's been playing a pretty good game. This time, he's not emphasizing too much on mines. He's actually going with more of the traditional Wings of Liberty, you know, Marine tank it style. And uh, uh, this is still obviously a very good way to play TVZ. The only thing is you do have to be careful because you do expose your siege tanks when you pull them behind. Uh, pull your infantry behind, that is. Uh, so I, I do I, I do feel like this is, you know, it's, an, it's a classic style to play Terran versus Zerg. And who better to execute than uh, Pult, who is a classic Terran. Um, we do have the Hive on the way right now from Snoot. 11 minute, 30 seconds start on the Hive. So a pretty quick start here. Infestation Pit getting Pathogen Glands. Banely Nest getting Centrifugal Hooks. And uh, Fourth Hatchery is now beginning to mine. We have some Roaches that are breaching the right hand side here of the map. The two Supply Depots were cancelled. Pult still on top of his supply, so he's not under supply, and he's got a lot of marines here too. I think he'll be able to clean up these roaches with minimal losses. Uh, four SCVs have gone down already. The roaches are trying to target SCVs, but all in all, we're only able to kill five, so Pult coming out ahead there as he was killing, uh, I think he killed like five roaches for five SCVs, which is a decent trade. And uh, as you guys can see here, fortifying that right-hand side, now going to go ahead and build walls up so that no units can come around the back. This is typically how, you know, Terrans, I think, typically favor this map because it's such an easy map to defend and wall off all your locations, and it's very easy to grab three bases as Terran. Uh, it starts to get a little, um, for both sides, it starts to get a little scratchy when you're trying to get the fourth base and the fifth base. Namely, this fourth Zerg expansion here, you can see that Snoot is very concerned about its vulnerability. Tanks can hide up here, infantry can come from behind the bushes, so he's building a bunch of spines and spores right now and rightfully so Pult is beginning to launch his attack here and I would imagine he'll put some tanks on the high ground leave some troops on the low ground as well and split his army apart uh, but in the meantime he's got to be careful because some Zerglings have come around the backside Banelings are coming in as well meanwhile the entire Terran army gets fungled and then chain fungled and the SCVs and meals have to run away uh, it looks like a ton of workers going down there's six more on top of the five originally and most of the Terran army getting caught by fungal growth Lakewood Snoot 
is showing what he's made of, and that was just a brilliant engagement. He won two battles in one there, the main battle in the middle of the field, and the economic battle by killing off some SCVs in the background. That was a brilliant play by Snoot, and uh, right now looking really good for him. He uh, is going to push out, and I'm sure we'll take out these tanks without too much trouble. He's also got 92 drones, guys. That's uh, and that is that's a little bit excessive on the drones, but to be fair, he's not maxed out yet. When he's maxed out, that's when you want to start throwing away extra drones. Uh, but here comes the Terran army once again. Lots of marines here. The upgrade's currently at 2-2 against a 2-2 of the Zerg. So even upgrades. It looks like all the Bane Eggs were canceled there because the marines' firepower with Stim was just too strong. And uh, it looks like soon making the right, right decision, I think. You don't want to stay there. Your eggs are very vulnerable. And uh, Snoot is best uh, served by waiting and morphing his banelings somewhere where they're safe. And I'm surprised he's actually not making banelings right now. Um, he's actually making uh, Ultralisks. Chitinous Plating 3-3 and Adrenal Glands are also on the way. It looks like a drop came on the right-hand side and I believe canceled a hatchery over here. So very nice drop by Pult, who's basically managing uh, multiple fronts here. That's what he's uh, really good at. Very, very expert at uh, Baneling Micro, anti-Baneling Micro, and uh, multi-managing his army. Uh, and you can see here, he's just hungry for this kill over here. But Snoot wisely throwing up a the round of spine crawlers, making it hard for these marines to find an opening. And I'm surprised Pult doesn't have any siege tanks here to back up this army. And here comes Liquid Seal bringing in all of his Zerg forces. And he's dropping down a bunch of fungals and infested Terrans. It looks like Pult will have to pull away. It's just too much for him to handle. And Snoot wins another battle in the middle of the map. Every battle, every win in StarCraft. It's, an, it's, a, it's, it's a snowball effect, and Snoot is starting to build a pretty mighty snowball. It looks like Pult is trying to come in here with the dropship, trying to get some damage done, going right at the ramp, where these Marines are actually pretty well protected because it's such a nice choke for them. Although they are immediately surrounded by Zerglings, which are, by the way, 3-3 with, uh, with Adrenal Glands, or soon to be 3-3, I should say. And uh, yeah, this medevac isn't going to be able to accomplish much, but I've got to say Snoot is, for the first time, uh, you know, in this series, winning at a long-term macro game. He's looking very good. He is actually looking pretty good in uh, in game one as well, if I'm totally honest. Uh, but unfortunately, he let it slip out of his fingers, and I think this time it's, a, it's time for redemption, uh, if you will. This medevac, I highly doubt it will ever get any more damage done because there's a spore to the left and forces to the right, not to mention queens as well. So um, that, that medevac is pretty much, yeah. Uh, one Marine taking out an Overlord on the left to clear up an area for an expansion. Uh, Pult just says, screw it, I'll go ahead and expand to the right-hand side instead. But it looks like Zerg troops are making their way over there. A ton of Ultralisks, in fact. And Pult has now transitioned into more Widow Mines, the style that he realized, hey, this worked much better for me, so why not go mass Widow Mines again? He's actually, do he doesn't have any more Siege Tanks. I really don't know what happened to all of them. Uh, but, you know, he was producing Siege Tanks at first, but they are all done. They're all gone now. So he's gone back to what worked best for him. Meanwhile, these Marines were able to drop, but they are immediately taken out. Here comes some Ultras to the left-hand side, but they run into the wall of mines and bio. And those Ultras, they probably don't want to run up there as, as, as ballsy as it might be. It's entirely way too risky. But Snoot is trying to find an angle where he can come in and exploit a weakness in the Terran infantry lines. It looks like he's gone in the right. He's brought reinforcements to the left, but Pult is microing his army so well, he's claimed back the Zelnaga tower and he's pushed the infantry off the high ground. Amazing play here by CM Storm Pult. What a beautiful pushback, reclaiming lost ground. And now he's got, by holding this high ground, he basically protects not only the uh, Zelnaga Tower, which uh, I guess you don't really need to protect it, but he protects the expansion over here on the right and all the expansions back here as well. So what a beautiful outpost to have. He's also planted down a bunch of mines here. You can't actually see them, but when they're under this uh, ritualistic circle, whatever it is, uh, they actually look a little different, which is kind of interesting, um, but they are there. Uh, if an Overseer were to come on top, it would be pretty hard to see that in the heat of combat, I would have to say. Uh, but here comes Pult. He's actually maneuvering his army now to the left. The master of disaster here, picking the right spots to attack, and he's actually dropped a couple of forces behind this new hatchery. This is the fifth expo for Liquid Snoot. And Snoot bringing his ultras in, he will be able to clean it up and push his army away. And it looks like he's found an opening. He's brought all of his army over to this planetary fortress, and the SCVs get wiped out. 31 SCVs 
going down in total, but Pult says, all right, you take a base up there, I take a base down here, and he's going to be able to kill off this hatchery with ease. But at the same time, his front door is about to be breached. All of Snoot's forces are coming in here. We actually have a base race on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. How the hell did this happen? But Snoot is in the top of the map, and Pult is on the bottom of the map, and both sides now are going to try to play base race. And the first one to the finish line wins the game, but it looks like Snoot is going to pull some of his forces back here. I think he's realized when you're trying to fight against the Terran, the main base is one of the hardest places to breach. It's so walled off with buildings and mines and reinforcements, I don't think he can break through. So he's pulling his reinforcements back here, but he's got a minefield he's going to have to traverse through in order to make it all the way back to the main base. But it looks like, uh, oh, those Ultras taking a bunch of damage, but they also clear the mines as well. The main base also being carved out, guys by a pack of marines and marauders. Meanwhile, on those eggs, eight ultras and three infestors are on the way. Uh, and those marines and marauders are trying to kill off these eggs before they hatch, but unlikely because our eggs are just so heavily armored. It looks like Snoot comes back in the main and he cleans up the Terran army. Wow, what a game. 192 supply to 138, 24k to 20k resources lost, uh, with Snoot losing just a little bit more. Um, workers lost 56 to 22. The Zerg is now on on four bases and the Terran is on three so it's like we just went back in time we took the DeLorean and jumped back about 10 minutes or so and both players have de-evolved in terms of their uh, in terms of their bases of course they still have the tech of a tier 3 army but they their armies are well at least Snoot's army is pretty big but Pult is nowhere near max anymore he's at only at 150 uh, so Pult will have to rebuild his army here and reclaim his expansions in the meantime though he's also got to be really concerned about all these old they are max upgraded ultras beelining straight for the natural expansion. Somebody warned the Marines and the Marauders. This is going to be really dicey, but it looks like Snoot decides, no, I'm not going to run up that ramp. I don't know how many mines I'm dealing with, and he decides against pulling up there. He's actually going to split his army in two, and he's going to send some of his troops over to the right-hand side. That would be a really good idea, because right now it's completely exposed. Two medevacs making their way to the bottom left-hand corner. It looks like Snoot is going to go in now. I think this army is going to die. I don't know why he went in on the left but he's brought all of his troops on the right as well so never mind that's a lot of ultras and Pult's gonna have to retreat all the way back up to the high ground the mines playing their part trying to do with damage wherever possible drop going on in the bottom left hand corner spawning pool has gone down so no more zerglings can come out those are cracklings in fact so they won't be coming out for some time and Pult actually retreats right back up into the main base in the meantime he kills off the mining expansion on the bottom left hand corner and it looks like this single attack once again a prime example of why as Terran you always want to be on the offensive pulling back all of the troops or at least some of the troops which basically just saved Pulse's uh, butt uh, and it looks like uh, those that medevac is now going to go ahead and flee but it gets fungled so it will get taken out these infestors also run by this expansion a couple of ultras and Roach is still left behind at the top but it uh, looks like they should probably go ahead and try to take out this orbital command meanwhile I don't know how this medevac made it out of there I thought it was fungled but it's apparently not uh, Snoot probably mismanaging and uh, or maybe he didn't have energy on his investors but he missed the fungal and that means he's got more marines to deal with inside his main base those are three three stimmed marines with combat shields they are no joke they're going to go straight for the technology centers here. Ultralis Cavern now in trouble. And this is huge. Snoot has to save that. Meanwhile, it looks like Pult now going into Banshee mode to try to keep his forces, to, to try to deal with the late game Zerg because there really isn't any anti-air from the Zerg army. So a pretty smart decision here. I will say, though, that Pult is fighting an uphill battle. He's at 117 supply against the 190 of Snoot. But then again, a lot of that supply is drones. So uh, Pult's army is, in fact, larger than it may seem. Uh, although that is a pretty big Ultralis herd. So, yeah, you know, this is a close one, guys. Um, and if Pult can continue to play this game of, of economic strangulation, keeping Snoot from mining money, keeping Snoot from making income, then it doesn't matter if Snoot has 48 drones because he's not making money. Although, uh, this is the base right now. This is the high center where Pult should be focusing his efforts on. I'm not, he should know that there's a base there. Yes, he does. And he should certainly focus his efforts on preventing mining from occurring at that base. It looks like right now he's trying to take out some of these creep tumors in the middle of the map, uh, thereby clearing a path. He's got a lot of Marines and Marauders on the ground now, but how in the world? I mean, his micro is good, but how? How does he beat an army like this? I don't know. I don't know if he can. So many ultras coming through. 
Pulse is getting fungled as well, so you can't micro when you're fungled. If Pulse somehow pulls this off, he is the greatest Terran that I've ever seen, but I don't think he can. Uh, all these Ultras just coming in from all angles, and these Marines and Marauders struggling to stay alive here. Can they do it? They're microing their hearts out, picking off Mar Mar Ultralis after Ultralis, and now it looks like the Medivac going to save the remaining ones. And in the meantime, this expansion up here was taken out. Oh no, Pult is starting to run out of steam. He's only got 22 supply left. I think that might have been it. I think Snoot has dethroned Pult. He's done it in a macro game, 28 minutes long, and there is nothing left. And as far as I can see, nothing left that Pult can do. No miracles can save you now at 20 supply. Um, so I think this is going to be GG here. Um, a couple of medevacs still floating around, but GG well played called CM Storm Pult. So what a game, what a series, and I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, check me out. I'm at YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, at HD Starcraft. And of course, like I said, I'll be going on vacation for a few days, uh, about four or five days. I'll be back after that, but uh, wish me luck. I'll be in Vegas, and I'll see you guys in the next cast. This is HD, signing out.